See, my point is about Karnataka. I mean, from yesterday after the exit polls, I've spoken to so many people across Karnataka who are still maintaining that, you know, the NDA will win the bulk of the seats, no doubt, but it's not a 23 to 25 range. I find it fascinating that even the vote share which is projected for Karnataka is close to 60%. For the NDA, and in fact, it was as high as 65 percent in some of the seats. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm a little curious about this, and in fact, I don't know whether you saw D K Shivakumar this morning saying that we will get in double digits. But I think Karnataka and a lot of your, you know, the South mm. picture of the BJP being getting 20 seats more and so on. A lot of it is is uh, See, uh, sort there of are, there are those who are who are unwilling to there are those who are unwilling to believe this, but there are those who believe that they, they, it will be a surprise. There will be a surprise. And the surprise is there is a reason why. Even in the assembly elections, the BJP actually increased its vote share by 2%. And when PM Modi gets on the ticket, as far as Lok Sabha is concerned, it's going to be a different return and a different different seats, energy Anand, altogether. 15 seats that the BJP hasn't lost in Karnataka for uh, two decades or Two decades. And they've only increased their vote share yes. there. They've not really... That vote share has also not shrunk in those One seats. One small point that... Yeah. Historically, over the last 20 years or so, 25 years or so, Karnataka has all voted differently in Lok Sabha and Vidhan Sabha elections, yeah, sure. including with the BJP. It, so, it, it has, and that's a consistent trend. So if this result is, if the exit poll holds, it's not out of whack with the historical pattern. The, the other thing is we have underestimated how much Modi on the ticket, PM Modi on the ticket actually matters. And the third time around, the, the sentiment is that it will be stronger. He will actually, perhaps this is the election where he's going to max out his trust value and brand factor and his uh, acceptability factor with the voter. Let's quickly bring it to Uttar Pradesh. Two aspects. Mayawati, the BSP vote, has it shifted away from Mayawati altogether? No seats for the B uh, BSP at all in Uttar Pradesh. As per the News 18 mega exit poll, the BSP retains 60% of its voter base. NDA eats away 15% and the INDIA is actually taking away 25% of the BSP's vote share. So that's what is happening. The traditional strong core BSP voter only 60% have stayed back with them. The remaining, quite a lot of them, 40% have actually shifted some towards the NDA and others towards the INDIA, SP and Congress there. And in the NDA, it is, of course, RLD and, of course, BJP and some of the other allies. Let's look at the RLD. What has it done? The Western UP numbers have shocked a lot of people despite low voter turnout. Has the RLD actually helped the BJP's cause in Western Uttar Pradesh? RLD supporters, 52% of the RLD supporters have actually backed the NDA and 45% of the RLD supporters have actually backed the INDI Gadbandan. Now, there could be an argument that the last time the RLD in 2019 was part of the, uh, you know, opposition, the Maha Gadbandan there in Uttar Pradesh and if that was the case in that Gadbandan or the INDI alliance at that time, then could there have been in RLD poll seats or RLD seats, could there have been some SP and Congress votes also? But bulk of the RLD support has says, actually moved to the BJP. What this number says is that that JAT backlash, huh. the conversation around that may not be as polarized against the BJP as presumed because you can see that there's a Whatever division. little anti-incumbency the local yeah. M, uh, MP candidate would have had from his yeah. own team yeah. may have been offset with the RLD so support coming through. That's possible. The sidelights of this is that to uh, take further Rahul's point, uh, the, in the last year or so, the BJP has made serious efforts to get to, towards the Jat community at multiple levels, both in terms of the state leadership, uh, at various overtures and so on. But you know, the interesting point is that in the last two, three elections, when because the Jat vote was perceived to be on the other side, it was the other OBCs, it was the Kushwahas and, 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 and Sainis and so on, who were who, who would unite against the Jat vote. Yeah. This time, when the Jat vote comes this side, it was interesting, but what happens to those guys That's who've always yeah, aligned against I, the Jat I've vote? I've hearing about this Jat anger <laughs> yeah. and Jat yeah. stuff yeah. set with BJP from 2017, then 2022. 2022, it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't manifest. The, the, but to, to my yeah. mind, I think this Dalit conversation is a fascinating one because uh, I think it's very clear Mayavati's vote has collapsed. And, and election after election, whether it was 17, 19, 22, we've seen evidence of that. And I think this will be the final nail in the coffin because this time she's fighting alone. Uh, she doesn't have the sort of support of the SP uh, vote as it were last time around. If you look at 2019, there are about 40, 45 seats where the Dalit vote is more than 20%, which means one out of five voters is a Dalit. Uh, and you'd presume there are a good number of them, at least half of them go into, go into Mayavati's kitty. 
But last time around, out of those 45 seats, the NDA had 35 at almost 50% vote share. And this mirrors the NDA vote share in other non-Dalit dominated seats as well. So this, the NDA vote share was 49% across the state and in the Dalit dominated seats, it's also 49%. Whereas the BSP got just seven seats at 22% vote share, the India Alliance, of course, the SP and the BSP was fighting uh, together at that, at, at that time. Uh, the India Alliance, SP and Congress had 23%. Now, if you look at the you know, regional breakup here, two or three seats in Western Uttar Pradesh, about four seats in Eastern Uttar Pradesh, but the rest of the state was entirely taken by the BJP. And to my mind, I think, as far as Uttar Pradesh is concerned, and, and frankly, the only way or only manner in which any election, any general All India election turns on its head is if Uttar Pradesh turns. The road to Delhi is through Lucknow, as they say, the famous adage goes. Mm. For the last three elections, we've not seen the dominance of the BJP is predominantly from their dominance in Uttar Pradesh. And I don't see a change in that in this election. And that's why imagine, the BJP is returning. Can you imagine that caste-based parties you know, the whole Mandal movement yeah. which reduced the massive majority of Rajiv Gandhi to basically nothing yeah. and, you know, had the VP Singh experiment and all of that come through, today are gone. Yeah, now, gone. is that because caste itself is becoming less relevant? I don't know. Or has the BJP been able to... Subsume caste. Subsume. I think, I, I, think, I think, yes, I think the voter is, at least in the north right now, in the Hindi belt, under double engine Sarkar or what have you, is voting beyond his caste, I so think. See that in many of the caste-based parties, or at, least, at least in the case of the BSP in particular, we saw this in 2022 as well, the voter who, it's, who left the BSP was more likely to join the BJP yeah. than to the SP. See, this, and there was also a demographic divide in, in there. The older Dalit, in this case, you know, the younger one is of the BSP kind of voter going to the BJP. To the in the ICIA. assembly election, uh, Anand, hmm. You know, the same conversation was happening. Yes. The OBC census, in fact, at that time in Bihar, they had declared the results just before the three, uh, the state's assembly went, the main ones, which have, yeah. you know, a huge right. amount of... Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh. Absolutely. Right. And it didn't seem to make a difference yeah. to the it voter did. there. Just going across to our guests, but Smita Prakash, if the, is, has any pollster predicted only 50 seats for the NDA in, in, in Uttar Pradesh? Has any pollster predicted that the INDI alliance is going to dent big time in Uttar Pradesh and make inroads because that's the only way they're going to get to 295. Look, uh, first I want to say this very important thing which I think is important is that caste is certainly not over in India. No way that politically you can eliminate that factor of caste. Caste based uh, uh, political parties need to reinvent themselves. You know, uh, to think that, oh, uh, it doesn't matter if you're a Dalit or not a Dalit, might vote for somebody else, etc. No, 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 no. The fact is that the BSP needs to reinvent itself. You know, somewhere Mayavati, she was sending out, she used to get that 12 to 15 percent vote regardless of what happened. But there was confused messaging from Mayavati. She's anyway be, uh, turned very lazy. If I'm sorry to say this, but she has turned lazy as a politician. But there was confused messaging from her. She got her nephew Akshay, then she fired him. You know, she she's not quick to pick up trends. Like, for example, when that whole Samvidhan Badal Denge thing happened and Ambedkar ye vote Nikal Lenge, a reservation hata denge. she could have jumped in right she could have taken advantage of that but she didn't she just let it pass but uh, as far as the larger parties are concerned now if you were asking me about the exit polls if there are any indication the congress has stagnated all over and especially in the three crucial states which is Uttar Pradesh Bihar and Maharashtra and as Zaka pointed out you don't get a significant majority in these states, you can't form a government. We'll know for certain on the 4th, but but you know, uh, if uh, the granular details, but if you saw Rahul Gandhi today when he was speaking to the media, it seems pretty certain that he's not willing to accept defeat gracefully or take it in his slide. And I think a part of the Congress leadership and some radical elements in other parties had started a week or so ago to express this dissatisfaction about potentially what the results will be. Mm -hmm. Now, we saw this happen in 2019. Please bear with me for a few uh, seconds because I just have to make this point that in 2019 too, there was this whole thing about EVM, EVM is faulty and the results will be faulty. But it did not get a nod from the top leadership of the party. But now there seems to be a momentum building up 
we've seen in two three press conferences which were held today by Piyush Goel by uh, Singhvi that you know to attack this whole counting process and declare the 